Hey guys, it's Avengel, welcome back to the channel, and today we're taking a look at Aerosoft's brand new Sea Ray Elite Advanced. Now, I say advanced because there are two versions for sale, one for 13 euros and one for 18. This is the advanced version. Now, from my surfing of the manual, which clearly states advanced version, and the website, the only difference I could find is that the advanced version references having high resolution PBR textures, whilst the other version does not. So it appears to be that's realistically our only difference. High res textures versus not high res textures and PBR materials. That might be it, it might not be, but again, it's not very clear what the difference is. It never really states anywhere. Now, this is a high wing single engine, technically LSA amphibian, with a closed cockpit, which is a nice change, of course. And this has two versions, which we'll see in the video today, a factory build and a home built version. Let's hope it's not home built by me, otherwise it will fall apart. Now, it has an EFB, it has interactive checklists. We have custom instruments, including Garmin InReach, the EIS 4000, GTX 320. Now, we have all the realistic functions and features, and you can fly this by the numbers, by the checklists. Everything works. Icing effects, rain effects, which should be standard and not really something to crow about. Now, uh, we have flight planning data, moving map in the EFB. Uh, Real-time way to balance menu and simulated walk around options there too. So we will see how this all works in the actual sim. Now it does come with an anchor simulation to keep you in position on the water, camping equipment, and a simulated autopilot in the in the EFS so you can step away for a cup of tea. Has custom yaw string animation on the uh, front windshield, which will be useful, and dynamic registration on liveries, which are nice features there. So we will, oh, of course has custom electrical and fuel pump logic to reflect the real-world operation of the top-mounted backward-facing engine. We'll see how that goes. Now, the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray is a American two-seat single-engine amphibious flying boat, as we mentioned, and it is qualified as an LSA. First flew in 1992, 480 have been built as of 2011, based on the last citation available for that. And the aircraft is 22 feet long, wingspan of 30 feet, and it has a takeoff weight at max of 1,370 pounds, so 622 kilograms. Powered by, I believe in this version as well, a single Rotax 912 four-cylinder horizontally opposed piston engine producing 80 horsepower. Max speed of 100 knots, cruise is about 75, stalls about 36 to 40, and uh, can get up to about 12,500 feet, which will take you some time. So... Let's take a look at this aircraft, shall we? B big bunch of liveries here, of course, as we would expect from an aircraft like this. And uh, here we are, the meat and potatoes. Landing gear first. They look very landing geary. I do like the uh, the tie downs, actually. That's kind of cool. We have sliding canopies there. It's a parasol style wing, so a single kind of stanchion in the middle, which the wing attaches to. Wing is fabric covered. Lots of composites and carbon fiber materials in the actual hull. Got our rather spindly looking outriggers there for the floats. Otherwise, not a hugely detailed outer surface, but it doesn't need to be. It is largely composite materials. I must say, I like the prop there, actually. That's rather nice. Very spindly propeller as well for what we're looking at here. I swear, I swear to God, the actual controls for the camera get more bouncy at the moment. As we go by. It's only like pan is smoother when I use my controller. Forward and back feels just as jumpy. Let's take a look inside. Now this is the factory built version. So this is our next waypoint direction indicator here. Um, it is Spartan. But it is clean. We can take off the tie downs literally visibly. We have our flap lever here. With kind of carpety covering. Oh, tent and chair. What does that do? Ah... I am happy with this. Even a little fire. Huh. I like the fact more people are including these kind of features with these aircraft. Let's put these away. How do I do that? Do I simply click on the tent? I do click on the tent. That's a nice feature there. So the tie downs are off. Pito covers off. Can I even see the chocks from down here? I can't, but we'll check it on the EFIP doodah. Our systems are on, or should be. It wants me to turn that on separately, I think. Avionics are on. Turn on tablet. 
So I don't think I can actually undock this based on what I read from the information it had. It appears to be solidly docked on the actual airframe itself. But we should have, those are our top there, we've got fuel pumps, we've got strobe lights, nav lights, we have cabin lighting, and we have, that's the backup fuel pump. Oh, that is also one there. That is a look at the seat. That's our engine information there, which is useful, simplified readout. The 2000 there, we have, that's Windows key, that's not the right button. Looking at the floats, look at the engine and propeller. Ah, oh, we could even pull it through. Nice. That is a cool feature. Okay, I like that. Okay, that is that is cool. Ah, so we have a good view down here. So we have a nav map with our nav planning. We can pre-flight here. Let's actually do that, shall we? Ah, that is super cool. How do I go to the next one? Or do I have to go all the way back to this again? So those are checked. Tire inflation condition. We'll go back and do that one. Nice. It gives me a readout. That is super cool. Uh, those are all checked. 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 Elevator movement. Rudder movement. Tire condition. So tire is decent. Rudder is good. So it's more of a click and it just does it for you. But that is a neato feature. I must say I like that. So we'll quickly check our tire on this side. Looking good. Hmm. Now oh, that was the tent I put out by accident. Can't actually control the door from out here. But apparently I can access the throttle. So back inside the aircraft. We will start this up and take it for a spin. So let's get our fuel pump turned on up there. Everything else is good for us. Our throttle is there. Our brakes are there. So make sure our throttle is cracked. Prop is forward. Fuel is ready. Ah, that Rotax wiggle. <laughs> Look at our uh, yaw string there. So we'll close these. So we have a little quieter flying experience for us. That side is closed. Okay, so let's turn my head on here. Get ourselves comfortable, and we'll pull the parking brake now. So I had a bit of throttle in there, so we'll just let a taxi out here, no problem whatsoever. And we'll get ourselves ready for departure. Shouldn't be too long a climb out. It can get off to rotation within 300 feet. It's about 1,000 feet to clear a 50-foot obstacle, though. So we landing over one. So very short takeoff and landing, even regardless. We'll probably do it in more if you try. But being an amphibian, I wouldn't really want to push it too hard. I do look forward to seeing what it'll do on water, though, and see how another flying boat will behave, because the flying boats tend to like the, that in the sim a lot better than the float planes. Come on. Uh, stop. There we go. Thank you. A little bit quick on my taxi out there. See, despite it saying it has these advanced textures and high-resolution textures, the glare shield, uh, I thought it looked a bit rough when we saw it on the flat handle there. Yeah? See, Mr. Flat Pandle? Well made in terms of all the features and fittings, but the texture on that flat handle and the general carpet texture is awful. Well, not awful, but really, really flat looking, you know? Because it's physics-based rendering, but that just looks like a flat carpet texture. The same thing for the glare shield. It looks very flat. Um, I do like the, the grippy kind of diamond plate on the floor there and on the pedals for wet boots or feet. Makes sense. It is a simple aircraft. Let's not be overcomplicated here. It is a simple aircraft, but you could have done a better glass shield. I really feel that's a letdown. Texture-wise, otherwise, I like it. It looks good. That leather looks reasonably realistic to what I'd expect. Um, I don't know. Some things just feel a little fuzzy. Or maybe it's just some of the actual depth isn't quite there to some bits, but in general, it looks good. The mic ports there look flat. The carpet looks flat on the glare shield. That's so obvious because it's right in front of you. It's one of those things you have to get right. Okay, here we go. Advance the throttle. A little bit of pedal dancing just to keep us straight. That's more me. I'm causing more oscillation than I'm preventing. 
I'm causing all this. Trying to fight what a little bit of interference there was. I've just caused more. There we go. The gear's coming up there. And it's up. So up and down is literally a case of... Comes up, comes down. Yeah. It's not very complicated. Engine sounds very high-pitched and scratchy, but that is also very Rotaxy. From what I've heard of Rotax powered aircraft. Okay, let's give it a little trim here. Now, the G5 is another attitude indicator, I believe, is an option in the uh, home built versus the factory built versions of the aircraft. So we'll bring her around here, we'll take her down for a touchdown on the water. And see how she behaves. So I'll leave my one stage of flaps that I have in. Do you quite like that? It's one of those typical kind of glider or LSA features you tend to see, but I mean, I've got a slip bo uh, turn indicator, but having the tape there is semi useful. I'm not sure I'm always necessarily a fan of having that, but we'll see. The big parasol wing really gives it a good glide profile. I've got no throttling right now, and we're just puttering along with no drama whatsoever. The real bread and butter will be what happens when we put it on the water, so let's accelerate that matter, shall we? Put on a bit of a side slip here and dump some altitude. Let's lose some altitude, altitude even here. Little fast right now, but we're not doing too badly. We're going to aim to touch down just parallel with the point ahead of us. There we go, come on, down we go. This is when you're in a hurry and want to ditch a lot of altitude really quickly. Good bit of control crossing never hurt anybody. Kick us straight here. And we're on a good approach point to our landing reference there on the headland. So I'm going to give it a little power here and just bring her in gently and see what happens. That doesn't feel gentle. I've just got too much pitch in there. I'm fighting my trim. Keep the nose straight with a little bit of nose up. Let us settle. Almost no fanfare there. That was super smooth. Okay, controls back. Flaps up. So we dump that weight onto the water. And she settles nicely. Not a skip or a hop or a, a bump. Again, this is furthering my belief that there's something to do with seaplanes versus float planes and how they behave because this didn't even give me a hint of the simulator skip let's put a notch of flaps in let's go for a takeoff here again keep our there we go let's get the nose down here we've got the step pretty quickly and it's super smooth again little bounce but that's more skipping on the surface but it was very smooth rather than the juddering we normally see that's really nice Compared to other float planes, again, I think maybe it's to do with the hull being in the water, the whole plane, versus the floats. It shouldn't make a difference, but it apparently does. There is our airport there. We're going to head over the little uh, hill towards our front, bring her around and do a wheeled landing. So let's pull back our RPM. So, of course, we can go through the various information on here. See what our manifold pressure is, the factors there, next page, OAT voltage, RPM. Cylinder performance details. More information, we've got altitude, we've got VSI, miles an hour. Some wonderful information on there, I quite like that. That doesn't do anything. These are an operative, that is our gear there. Of course, we have transponder, and we have... What do you do? That's our navcom radio. That would do it. Okay, so power's going to get pulled back out here. I still have a lot of trim in from takeoff, so we'll neutralise that a second. It is very trim-sensitive, of what I've found. Or more trim-sensitive, I should say, than other aircraft that I've seen. Okay, gear down. 
Let's pop these uh, hatches open, shall we? Now, these can be opened in flight, according to Aerosoft. They're both connected, apparently. So you can fly with that open, or you can fly with it closed. And we'll bring around here and in. You can pick a really tight pattern with how slow this is. I'm not honestly sure I like just having the G5 for my airspeed and my altitude. Or attitude, sorry. Because it does tend to be a little bit small and hard to read. Which in the sim, unlike real life kind of view distances for screens and instruments, it does bother me a little bit. Because the real world screens are a lot easier to read. In the sim, they are not. Let's roll around here on heading. Let's bring her around here as our runway. Keep that straight. No problem whatsoever. Very gentle to fly. It's obviously not a fast aircraft, but it is incredibly forgiving here. And for little hopping around islands, this would be a wonderful aeroplane. Price is on the cheapish side. 18 euros for reasonably full, full aircraft in terms of features. You've got lots of playability from the extras and from the fact you can use a tent. You can actually go and put the chocks and tie downs and pitot covers on and off. You can do a full walk around fiddling with the actual aircraft as you would. That's quite a nice realistic feature. I like that. Okay. Powering to idle. I'm going to let us sink down here for the numbers. Be aware this wing does appear to have a good bit of lift behind it. I'm finding the pitch a little bit sensitive at this point. Okay, we'll just let us stall there. And bump down onto the runway. Very smooth. Pitch is incredibly sensitive, though, um, from what I'm seeing here. Uh, the rudder feels quite spicy, too. Maybe that's why I had such a wild time going down the runway. Maybe it's just me. But it does feel like it really wants to give me a lot of controllability on that. So pitch and rudder feels quite sharp, and the well, tail steering at least. Although I had the wheel, tail wheel up for a good portion of the takeoff roll there, and it was still trying to do it to me, so not sure. Maybe that one up to you guys to decide. Other than the textures and apparently the PBR enriched aircraft looking very flat and soulless, it isn't bad. I, I think it's just the glare shield that bugs me so much, because something that's so visible it being a little underwhelming is the one thing that bugs me. Like, I can forgive the the other bits where the carpet is a little bit weird on the handle behind my head. How much am I going to see that handle? But the carpet, I am. Okay, so. Mags are off there. Head is off. Power and systems are off. And interestingly enough, it closes that as I actually switch off the power. Let's go take a look at the home build version, shall we? Okay, so here we are in the home-built version, which does have a regular airspeed indicator here. Otherwise, we have most, if not all, other systems on this aircraft. Now, there's meant to be a faked autopilot key somewhere. I'm not sure which that one is. I'll turn that on. Let's go down to the tablet, see if it's on there. Because I believe the fake autopilot will at least hold your attitude. See, that's gone over there now. It's not actually gone to the tablet, which is semi-annoying. Oh, that's our brightness and darkness. Not bad. Now, why aren't the rest of my systems turned on here? Avionics, that would help. Okay. So our weight's there. We can set passenger weight. We can set pilot weight. Grab and drag. They all function as expected. Now, let's turn on our overhead light here, which we do have. Let's go to darkness, see what this thing looks like at night. So quite bright, it seems. Doesn't seem to be a ton of scaling in that. That's just a cabin light. What's it like with it off? Just the instruments and barely that. There has to be another switch in here somewhere for that. I'm sure there does. Do I have some sort of control to roll to change my lighting brightness in the cabin 
It's hot air, that's anti-ice. I didn't see one mentioned in the manual. I could be entirely stupid. That's the right way to trim, of course, there. I didn't see one. No. Those were an operative. But there wouldn't be a lighting control. That's landing light. Doesn't work. That would be bilge pump. Yep, I don't see an actual instrument light, but it isn't actually rated for night operations, so I guess that is correct. Night VFR is not permitted in this aircraft. Uh, max demonstrated crosswind is 15, max permissible headwind is 20 and tailwind 5, so those are factors. Um, externally, let's take a look here as we will, I will endeavour to try and use a controller to be a little smoother, which it just about is. Okay, I was wrong. It is smoother, I'm an idiot. But the actual, the modelling and detail quality of the aircraft is really nice, I must say. They've done a good job with it. Again, my only real gripe is that sodding carpet on the dash. It just looks so fake. Whereas here, again, you can see it there. It looks so flat. If that's meant to be fluffy kind of carpety material, that's really flat. Not a fan. Otherwise, overall, I like this aircraft. So basically, it's just, it's just an instrument change in terms of the layout in the cockpit. That's basically it. Um... The interior is also more rugged, so being a home built, you have these more plain seats, which is okay, I didn't notice that difference before. This would be our ELT there, technically, with the switch there. The interior is much more spartan in here, we've got the frame more visible, rather than having the actual cover over things inside here. So, okay, the home built version is much more, I like the central controls there, rather than being so well organised and prettily laid out. Okay, bigger difference with factory version to home built, I was just being blind, and looking at the instruments instead, but... It does feel different. A little bit more flimsy, perhaps, to the home-built version. I prefer the other one. But not bad. So, what do I think of this? 18 euros. Again, I'm, I'm not sure what the actual difference is between the standard and the advanced. They don't really clarify. Uh, but I'm going to assume from what they don't say in the other description being... It doesn't have to mention how the PBR high-resolution textures. I'm assuming it's literally just lower-resolution textures and non-PBR materials, which seems like a moot point in 2020 where it's almost expected to include those features and there's no point not doing. And even lower-end systems can support most of those features now, especially the consoles as well. So, don't know. But, in general, very nice aeroplane. Fun to fly, relaxing, and lots of toys and features with it. So, for a good price, worth picking up if you like amphibians and the water behavior is really good. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.